Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to all to the Museum of Science. I'm David Rabkin. I direct current science and technology here at the museum. And I and my group are always scanning the world for interesting new developments in science and technology. And we explore what those developments mean for us in our own lives, uh, for our culture, and for our world. Um, I'm particularly thrilled to be welcoming Tara Fujia here to the museum, not just because they're an intriguing company and a great example of the engineering process, um, but because they are a collaborator with the museum and a role model uh, for all of us, both in critical thinking and the combination of adventure and hard work that I think make for great science and engineering. Um, so when I am able, when I'm fortunate enough to be able to bring them into the museum, into contact with the public, I know I've got a pretty electrifying and inspiring mix. Um, and so I'm pretty darn psyched to have you, Carl, and Anna, and Andrew here who have been great supporters of the museum intellectually since the days when they were blowing up rocket motors. Um, we really like to show off cool stuff at the museum, stuff that really captures the imagination and makes people wonder what it means. This plane here, or car, or however you want to label it, uh, really taps into our fantasies, but it also raises real questions about how you design and build something like this, and perhaps even more importantly, how you test and refine it. Um, so it's not just fun, it is the product of very hard work, and I'm hoping we're going to hear a little bit about that work and some of the results it's produced. Um, so with that in mind, I'd like to introduce Carl Dietrich. Carl is the CEO. Um, he has a grab bag of degrees, uh, including a PhD in aeroastro, that's aeronautics and astronautics, uh, from MIT. Uh, as I said, he's an alum of the Museum of Science, having spoken here quite a few times and inspired a whole lot of high school students, uh, as well as people like me and maybe some of you. Um, my understanding is he's won pretty much every design competition that everyone has ever thought of. Uh, he won the Lemelson MIT Prize for invention, um, and here he is working on the first practical he asked me to use the word practical, uh, street legal airplane. Um, and so in the spirit of innovation and adventure that I think makes for great science and that I would like the museum to represent, I'd like to welcome Carl to the podium. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Well, thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Museum of Science and to a special announcement of a milestone in aviation history that has been four years in the making for our phenomenal team and over 90 years in the making from a historical perspective. As David said, my name is Carl Dietrich and I'm the CEO and Chief Technical Officer for TerraFugia. TerraFugia is an MIT spin-off company based in Woburn, Massachusetts that is bringing the first practical street legal airplane to the world, the TerraFugia Transition. TerraFugia's transition is a small aircraft that can fold up its wings, drive on the road, gas up at a normal gas station, and park in a single car garage. It has been called the first practical flying car by some, but our team prefers to think of it as a personal airplane with the unique ability to drive on the highway, a rotable aircraft or a street legal airplane. It will not be a replacement for anyone's car, but if you're willing to spend 20 hours in the air to become a certificated sport pilot, the transition could bring a revolutionary new level of freedom to your world. The transition has been in development since 2005. It was put through initial drive testing in the fall of 2008. And I'm extraordinarily pleased to announce that at 7.40 a.m. on March 5th, 2009, in Plattsburgh, New York, our first vehicle, the TerraFugia Transition Proof of Concept, this vehicle right here, successfully made its maiden flight. 
cue up a picture. This is a picture of it actually uh, shortly after, just seconds after it left the ground. The Terrafugia transition is a product that redefines the way pilots will use their airplanes. In business speak, a disruptive technology. In 2002, researchers at MIT conducted a survey of pilots which identified the largest obstacles to the more widespread use of general aviation. The 1,500 pilots surveyed cited four main obstacles to them preventing their more widespread use of personal aviation. Weather sensitivity. Little planes like this are just fundamentally more sensitive to bad weather than big commercial airliners. Limited mobility on the ground. There are 5,000 public use general aviation airports around the country, the nation's biggest underutilized transportation resource. And most people don't know about them. Uh, but most of them don't have any sort of rental car facility or even a cab stand. Long door-to-door -door travel time. Pilots tend to spend a lot of time actually at the airport on either end of their trip, moving bags between vehicles, that sort of thing. So the potential time savings of flying fast from point to point in a sport aircraft like this is often mitigated by time spent transferring between modes of transportation. And finally, uh, one of the most significant ones is high cost. Both the purchase price of light aircraft and the cost of ownership of small planes is out of reach for the majority of the pilot population. Terrafugia's transition is the only product on the market that directly addresses every one of those obstacles to the more widespread use of personal aviation. The transition allows pilots to go through bad weather by landing at the nearest airport, folding up their wings, and driving underneath the storm, significantly improving trip safety for light aircraft. The problem of limited mobility on the ground is taken care of. And because it takes only 20 seconds to convert between driving and flying, pilots spend less time fiddling around arranging for a tie down at the airport and more time actually on their way to their destination or at their destination. The transition also substantially reduces the cost of ownership of an airplane because it uses a very fuel efficient new technology engine that gets 27 miles to the gallon in the air and over 30 miles to the gallon on the ground. Better mileage than most cars, but at 115 miles per hour point to point. And of course, it allows the owner to keep their aircraft at home in their garage instead of having to rent a hangar. Uh, the airport, one of the GA airports closest to us where we are here is uh, Hanscom Field and hangars, uh, there's a six year waiting list for to get a hangar and then it will cost you around $1,200 a month to rent one. So uh, it is a major problem, especially in metropolitan areas. By directly addressing these largest obstacles to the more widespread use of general aviation, the Terrafugia transition will become a disruptive product with the potential to spawn a revolution in the, within the industry. The first flight of the transition is symbolic of the beginning of this radical change. With this achievement, Terrafugia has set the stage for a new era of person, personal aviation. While this milestone is certainly a team accomplishment, there can be only one person with direct control over the first flight of a new vehicle. It takes an extraordinary type of person to pilot an unproven aircraft design for the first time. The aircraft that they fly are quite literally thought experiments until the pilot takes them up into the air. The test pilot is the individual with the ultimate responsibility for and control over the mission of turning our flying dreams into practical realities. At this point, it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce you to Terrafugia's chief test pilot and flight test coordinator, Colonel Phil Mateer, who will describe what it was like to make the first flight of the transition. Thank you. Phil.